You also have the 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 archetype of the sort of the doofy dad, like you were mentioning right. Homer Simpson. Like that's Peter the, Griffin. The, those are the those are the archetypes you're you're given really since the well, I guess the late seventies, early eighties, through where we are right now. You basically have three archetypes. You've got the doofy dad who needs mom Marge to save him from himself, right? <laughs> you know, she's with her feminine while she's going to be the one who's going to like sort of you know, her intuition, right? She's going to save him from like you know setting the maybe, house maybe, on fire. Maybe sometimes I, I don't know. I don't know if I agree. Well, with that and then there's so then there's the other archetypes. The other archetype is the borderline abuser the guy who's like he's just a, a controlling domineering possessive son of a bitch who is just this side of like sending her to a you know women's shelter and then no, there's no, no, the guy the to the moon to the moon yeah yeah exactly <laughs> jackie gleason yeah, yeah jackie exactly. gleason uh, uh, uh archetype and then there's the uh, really more in recent times i think it's the incompetent guy it's the more millennial slash uh gen z zoomer guy who doesn't know how to drive a stick he doesn't know how to tie a, you know how to tie a tie he doesn't know how to do you know he's incompetent so those are really sort of the three archetypes types that women think that they have to choose from and they don't want to choose from any of them. I, I got to give a shout out to Futurama back when we had good shows. I mean, they're, they're bringing it back, I guess, but in, it's like the first episode, I think they go to the moon mm -hmm. and uh, Fry and Leela characters in the show are doing a moon tour and it's like, and here's the history of moon exploration. And it was whalers on the moon. And then they show a clip where it's like, here's a reenactment from early American astronauts. And it's Jackie Gleason going, going, one of these days, bang, <laughs> zoom, straight to the moon. And then Leela's like, I didn't realize your astronauts were so fat. It's like, he's not an astronaut. And he was just using space travel for as a metaphor for beating his <laughs> I've got it's this, funny because it's true. I've got this train of thought now that you mentioned 1848. The beginning of this was the feminine, the rise of the Seneca feminist Falls. Yeah. So is this like with the hyper industrialist <laughs> movement to get the women into the workforce, get women rights, to get them out on their feet? Because this is like right around when the railroads are starting to get the 1800s, like industrialization. And I then that it, leads to corporate oligopoly, which leads to communism, like no fault divorce in the 80s. But like, is this all I don't part think, of the destruction? I don't think it's any, the, maybe he'll confer with this. Uh, I don't think it's any coincidence that Marxism and feminism came up right around the same time. Um, sure. I would I would argue that uh, in the initial right after Senate, I always when I talk about feminism, I don't talk about it in waves because I don't believe there were any waves. I think it's the same fucking thing that it's been for forever. OK, um, it's only been interrupted by wars and civil unrest. And when we got to the point where it was uh, what 1920 is when we had the 19th Amendment ratified. Right. It was the suffragette movement was supposed to be just so we can get our women can get the right to vote and everything. But it was much more than that. Uh, they were referred to as terrorists back then in the United States and in the UK wow. at that time. Yeah, right. uh, I mean, seriously, bombing like police precincts, planning assassinations, things like that. There's a really great book. It's called The, uh, the Suffragette Bombers. And it goes through like the news cycle of what was going on during that time. And really, they were referred to as terrorists right up until maybe the early 1900s. And then by the time we get to 1920 and we ratify the eight or the 19th Amendment, um, now we've go we move from the suffragette into like feminism proper. And until we get to about 1965, when we have the advent of hormonal birth control, we are, are interrupted by two world wars. Um, you know, the, God knows how many different re revolutions and everything else. But it's no coincidence that the either Marxism was sort of a tandem to that, or it was something that was um, that that picked up on the movement and sort of found like common ground together. You know, it's interesting what, what, you said there's no waves because I'm just thinking now feminism is one beast that only kind of changes shape as technology yeah. changes. Well, we have like to stop, radio. We have to stop thinking of it in waves because I think a lot of people say, well, first wave feminism was great. No, they were considered terrorists back then. Yeah, this is. I, I hate agreeing uh, just with everyone. <laughs> it's okay, beginning. man. We, uh, no, we, uh, we really agree on about 85 percent of up shit. top. Here we go. Like, actually, it's really, really important chapter. <laughs> two of, of case for patriarchy I, I trace it out from 1848 um, which is memorialized in a document called declaration of grievances by uh, Elizabeth Cady Stanton mm. who was this literal witch who was running things at 1848 and they itemize the big goals of feminism then and it's it's really staggering to people when they see I, I go line item first wave feminism Mallory and Kate Millett second wave feminism from a 1970s New York boardroom where they're making a chant of what does second wave feminism stand for it is self same mm -hmm. like Rolla just said sex egalitarianism convince people from the top that men and women aren't aren't different we're, we're totally different we're totally mm -hmm. polarized contraception women in the workplace uh women out of the home and be equally promiscuous to match mm -hmm. 
this this Lilith view of of men that that the feminists have that all comes right out of the 1848 document. Also, get women and clergy, which is like fourth wave feminism. Mm -hmm. one, so this can't be overstated. Possibly one thing that uh, we've we've talked about about is uh, the lack of civic responsibility that women uh, retained mm -hmm. despite getting the right to vote. And so my view is pretty much. Uh, you want to be equal, then you have equal responsibilities along with those equal rights. And mm -hmm. those responsibilities are literally everything. How is it that today men are required to sign up for the draft, but women are not, but women expect full oh. civic privilege? Oh, it goes worse than just that. Oh, of course. Selective services. That's is what I mean. Some, well, I mean, you're not even, a, okay, if you want to be a naturalized citizen in the United States and you're eight, you're male and you're 18, you have to sign up for selective services. Yes, in fact, you cannot be a cit literally, you cannot be a citizen in the United States if you want to be a naturalized citizen. In the United States, if you do not sign up for selective services, the, if you do this, oh, there's also the. I mean, you, you can incur up to like a quarter million dollars in in you can go to jail. fee. You can, yeah, you can go to jail. You cannot in some states. You can't hold a, a driver's license. You're never going to get a government job. You can't run for office uh, unless you sign up for selective services, and unless it's you're, all based on whether you have a penis or you have a vagina. So. I actually think one of the quickest ways to resolve a lot of these issues, quite literally, is for all men to mandate. Or, or, or I shouldn't say mandate, but to demand equal civic responsibility with equal civil rights. Mm -hmm. Anybody who wants civic privileges has to be uh, held responsible to the same degree. If men and women are the same, women should not have that privilege of avoiding the draft. Of course. Mm -hmm. the, the and, and But real yeah. quick, the reality is I get these conservatives then going, she wants to draft women. Yeah. No, it's because yeah. mm -hmm. outright liberals would reject the premise. They would, I guarantee you, if you go to women and say, vote right now. You have the right to vote and you get drafted or you can't vote and you can't be drafted. 60, 70 percent say, don't do not draft me. I, I would rather not vote. I don't care about voting anyway. So ask that question and see what the result you get is. But I, I actually think fine. If in, in any capacity, anybody wants to participate in our society, they have to have the same responsibilities as everybody else. But the, the problem with this is, as you know, you're just trying to demonstrate the inequality, equality. It's it's Hegelian dialectic, false equality. And, and that's basically the, the gynocentric society that Rollo's talking about, is that everything in society is geared toward lending the appearance of equality with men when it comes to benefits, but not burdens. And, and this, you could take it to war. I take it to female sports. Um, it, we not just, anymore, though. No, no, no. Yeah. Well, think about, <laughs> no, think still... about uh, Steph Curry versus whatever the no-name girl Caitlin is. Clark. Okay, okay, so I'm a big big basketball guy. I'm not, and I there, know her name. <laughs> yeah, well, no, 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 but this is the other one. That's the college one. There's a, a pro one that they put, they paired alongside Steph Curry in the NBA as if they were shooting the same ball. She wasn't shooting a basketball. She wasn't shooting a regulation-sized ball. So it's all <laughs> bread and circuses, and, yeah. and she, she did really well. And it's like, but you're, you're throwing a softball. This guy's throwing a baseball. It's a different sport. Sports are fundamentally masculine. And yet, conserv cuckservatives today will jump all over if you're like, okay, sports are fundamentally masculine. They're, they're training for military. I, I, I hope we all agree on that. Um, maybe not. But conservatives will jump all over your case if you're like, okay, so it's gender dysphoria for a man to want to play a man's sport once you've stuck a woman in there. I agree that's gender dysphoria, but I think we're disagreeing as to where it becomes dysphoric. Typical conservatives today will say, well, women should have their own league why if it's if it's egalitarian why should they have their own league if if we really believe that women are basically just low functioning men which is not what i believe i believe women are beautiful uh havers of of, of babies and they they create what's um good and beautiful in the world what's craftly in the world what men want to fight for the women are great cheerleaders men are the ones going out playing the sports so why are we sticking them fakely next to Steph Curry as if they could compete when everyone knows they, oh, can. they can't. They can't. It's laughable too because uh, we're, we're launching this big skate thing. We've, uh, April 6th is our big opening for the boonies and we're getting uh, flack because I have a ton of uh, video segments I've done where I said female skateboarders are the, if there is any sport where you can see the distinction plain as day, it is skateboarding. Uh, when I watch tennis, I know nothing about tennis. I see two women play tennis. I see the ball go back and forth. And I'm like, okay. I watch two men play tennis. I see the ball go back and forth. I say, okay. I don't really understand the difference in the, the court size or the mm -hmm. rackets or the speed or any of that stuff. But you watch skateboarding and you watch a dude 
do a double backflip over a 100 foot gap and then fly up 47 feet in the air, slam and hit the ground and then walk away from it. And then you watch women do that mm -hmm. and they just jump and they do no trick at all. Mm -hmm. You're like, okay, wait, well, the women are literally doing nothing. The men are doing these crazy aerial acrobatics. You to the layman, you can literally watch female skateboarding. And I mean, no disrespect to the feet. I have friends who are, are, are female skateboarders, many of them. You can plainly see the gap between males and females in skateboarding is it's 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 100 X. Mm. It is it is insane. We watched we, we pulled up. I think it was on the culture war. We pulled up an X Games street skateboarding women's. And uh, yeah, it was on the show. We were talking with some skateboarders and we were bringing up the difference between male and females in skateboarding. And the best female skaters in the world are as good as 12 year old boys who've been skating for four months. Mm -hmm. And then you watch the best men in the world and I'm, I, I can do a play by play and be like, never in my life, no matter how hard I try, would I get to that level. These are the cream of the crop, the best of the best guys that are, that are doing things we couldn't even imagine were possible. You watch the women and you're like, I'm 38, semi-retired, and I, I could do all those tricks. Yeah. Yeah. I'm an old man. This is universal to all the sports, though. Right. You, I, right. I don't love tennis. Do you know the story of Karsten Brash? No. The, no. the German. He was ranked 101. Oh, when he, when he beat mm -hmm. the sisters? The, the Williams sisters. They're like, look, we think we want to calibrate because women aren't, aren't as good at, at men as sports. But we think that we could beat the 100 rank of men's tennis. This is Karsten Brash. So they, they start talking shit to him. Hey, let's play. He drinks a beer, smokes a cig. He goes over, I forget who he plays first, Serena, I think. I, I don't know the difference. Um, and he beats her, uh, whatever it is, Handle. four to one, mm -hmm. handily, five to one, whatever it is. Then the other sister comes up and he beats her for love. And he, I mean, he's, I think he drank another beer in between. And afterwards they Remember asked he her. he was drunk. Mm. Yeah, he was yeah, he was probably drunk. And I'm and he, she still shouldn't have gotten that score on him. <laughs> That's my problem with him. <laughs> yeah. But he she was like I've never seen a ball coming at me that fast. Wow. This mm -hmm. is not the same sport. So what we have to start telling young ladies is go back to cheerleading. Well, be there on the side and don't do something that you're bound to be less and, good at. Yeah. It's and, setting and, up to fail.